Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about a number trick that you can find on the ancient Egyptian rind papyrus. Now this papyrus right here, this is just a piece of it, papyrus meaning of course paper, it's a collection of fantastic math ideas. And we call it the rind papyrus because it was rind who discovered it, right? Here we're going to focus on a number trick. And you know, before I even start this number trick, isn't it amazing that the, the ancient Egyptians thought it was important, this trick was important enough to record on paper? And if you think about the value of paper and the difficulty of making it, it's really quite astonishing that they actually recorded this trick. So as we go through it, I, I think we should just reflect and think about why did they, or think about why they might have valued this trick so much. And what can we take from it? So how does the trick actually work? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually pick a number. And let me just fix the pen tool there. Get the right size. We want to pick a number. And then what we want to do, and you can really alter this any way you want. And this is, this is not even the exact trick that you find on the papyrus, but this has the basic same principle. You pick a number, and then let's add six to that number and you can play along so you can enjoy this trick and then you double right your number and then subtract four and to finish off right let's divide by two or you can say cut it in half right and then here's the last step subtract your original number from this, right? So whatever you originally chose, subtract your original number. So let's let's just try this out to get a sense of what's happening. So let's say we pick the number 5, right? You could pick any number here at all that you want. Um, if we pick 5, we, the next step is to add 6 to that, right? So we add 6 to 5 and we get 11. We double that, we get 11 times 2 is 22. And then we subtract 4 from 22, and we get 18. Take 18, divide it by 2, and what do you get? Well, you get 9. And then we want to subtract our original number from this, and that was 5, right? That was our original number. So 9 minus 5 is 4. And, well, we might not realize it yet, but the fun, one of the fun features of this trick is that it doesn't really matter what number we chose. You might have chose a different number from me, but you might notice already that in the end, right, what did you get? Well, you got four. And the question becomes, well, why does this really happen? What's going on here? And that's, I think, where the, the, the richness of this conversation can begin. Because this really leads us into some great algebraic thinking. So, for example, how can I deal with this? Let's say we pick a number, right? When we pick that number, we're just picking something. And let's, let's just say that, that that something is represented by a symbol or... Well, anything we want, really. Let's do um, a little square. So that's something you pick, right? Well, the next step, you're adding 6 to that. So we have our original amount. And we think about this with symbols. We add 6 ones to that original amount. And here's the, the key. Those 6 ones have to be a different symbol, right? Because we don't know what this is. So we add 6 ones, and we use a different color. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we have something plus six ones. And, and this is going to help us prove why this leads us to four. Now when we double everything, what's going to happen? Well, instead of having six ones, we'll have twelve ones. So we can write those out. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And of course we want to double this um, square or rectangle right here. So we have two of them. And you can see that we have two of the original plus 12 of these ones. And now we subtract four. So how do we do that? Well, we have 12 ones here, and now we're subtracting four ones. So we still have our original two unknowns, numbers, whatever we picked originally. But now instead of 12 ones, we're going to have eight. Oops, wrong color. So we have eight ones. So let's draw that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And now this gets interesting. We divide this all by 2. So each of these groups could cut in half, right? That's what dividing by 2 means. So instead of having two unknowns, we'll have one. Instead of having eight ones divided by two, that's four. One, two, three, four. And now look at this. You can almost see it, right? This shape right here, even though I should have kept it the same throughout, I should have used my rectangle tool there. I don't know why I didn't use that tool. But if I take that away, which I'm going to do, what's going to be left? Well, these four right here. So in this last step, we're going to take away the original number. And what's left but 4? So in a way, we're showing that it doesn't really matter what number you start with. When you do this process in the end, you'll end up with just 4. Now, how does this connect to algebra? Well, using these symbols and these pictures is part of algebra. But you might want to see this in terms of variables, right? Because here we have numbers. That's our first column. These are the steps that we're using of the trick. Here are the numbers. Here we're using pictures. Well, let's connect this all to variables and expressions. Right? Right, that's typically what we see in, in algebra class. So let's see how does this all fit in. And that's what we'll do next. So how do we actually represent this? in terms of variables and expressions. Well, instead of this unknown box right here, we're going to say the unknown is a variable x. Right? That's typically what we're doing in, in algebra, pretty common variable. I can use any one there. In the next one, I have x, and I'm adding to it. Right? I'm adding 6. And you can see it right here in the picture. There are six of these coins or whatever in, in the unknown variable. In the next one, we have two x's. Right, because we double everything, and 12 coins. And how did we get there? Well, to get that, we doubled x plus 6. So you might see this typically, 2 times x plus 6. And often you might be told that you distribute this 2 and multiply it by the 2 and the 6, and that's correct. You get 2x plus 12, but really look at it here in terms of the picture. Right? You can see everything doubling. So the x's are doubling and to 2, and the 6 coins are doubling to 12. It's all there. Here, we subtract 4. So basically, we take this equation and subtract 4. So 2x plus 12 minus 4. And you are starting, I hope, to get that intuition that when you take 4 away, you're taking the coins away, because each of these little coins represents 1. So taking 4 away means you definitely take away 4 1's. These two variables right here, right, if they had each equaled 2, then you could somehow take them away, but we don't know what they equal. They could equal 1,000 each. In our case, it was 5 each, right? So taking these away wouldn't make sense because, um, well, if it's 5 each, that means they're really worth 10. See, that's why you can't really touch those variables there. When you subtract 4, you just subtract it from the 12. And you can see it in the picture, and 2x plus, 4 minus, plus 12 minus 4 is really 8. And now we have this equation we're working with. And the next one we divide by 2. And I, I think you know the power of these pictures really comes into play here because 2x and, and 8 divided by 2 might be written like this. Notice I'm using this line right here to represent division, like a fraction. And one thing I think that confuses students is when they try and divide by 2, in this case, they might only divide the 8 or only divide the 2x, but not divide both terms. We should realize that this really equals 2x divided by 2 and 8 divided by 2. And I think that might, might make the most sense if we look at it in terms of this picture right here. Right? How do we get this picture? Well, we took everything here and cut it in two groups. So you can't just take part of it and cut it in two, right? You can't just take the 8 and divide it by 2 to get 4. You divide everything in two groups. So that instead of having 2x's and 8 1's, we have 1x and 4 1's. So here, you can even see it in the math. 2x divided by 2 is just 1x. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we get x plus 4, or 1x plus 4. And now, we have this equation, x plus 4. And what do we do in the last step? Well, we subtract the original number. So x plus 4, and then we take x away. Well, x minus x, of course, is 0, right? And all that's left is the 4. So this, this is pretty powerful stuff. And I think what the exciting thing about one of the exciting things about algebra is that when you use a variable like x and you show how 
these steps lead you to the number four, you're doing something so much more than we did here by plugging in a number. When we plug in a number, we feel great, we tested it out, and we see that we got four. And you could run this experiment a hundred times, a thousand, a million, or a billion, or a trillion, and always get four, and feel confident that you always get four. Of course, the problem with that is if you tried all the numbers from one through a million, I could always ask you, oh, did you try negative one? And then you have to plug that in. And then I can keep going, right? I can always ask you about another number to see if you plugged it in. But that's what's so powerful about X. You're saying here, since X was not specified, it could equal anything, any number, and you'll still get four. I encourage you to try out different numbers. Try plugging in negatives and so forth. And, and that's, I think, part of the power of this trick. And, and it's not, of course, I mean, I often refer to it as a magic trick, but really, this whole process right here is understandable and decipherable through algebra. We can look at these patterns to make sense. And I encourage you to try to make your own tricks and your, and your own ways of interpreting the um, number trick on the rind papyrus. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this.